Cohen Benjamin. This is Grandma. Um, it is Tuesday, 10th of January, and a lovely sunny morning. We want to thank you so much for your tape. We really did enjoy it. If we make this one half as interesting, we should be pleased. Well, we were very impressed by your piano playing, Nicole. It was marvellous. I can hardly believe that you only started taking lessons recently. Uh, <coughs> we liked your playing too, Jill. And, of course, Tom's. He sounded like a professional, really confident. Thank you very much for your letter, Nicole. We are glad that you and uh, Benjamin had such a lovely Christmas and so many lovely presents. We hope you're enjoying your bike, Benjamin. It sounds a really marvellous one. Now, I expect you want to hear about Hazel and family. So, I will launch into the saga of Christmas. It seems such a lot to say that I've made a few notes, so if it sounds as if I'm reading from notes, well, I am, some of the time. So off we go. <clears throat> they came down on Christmas Eve, arriving in time for lunch. The weather had been exceptionally mild all the, all the month of December, so there was no problem about driving. But the poor things had all been down with flu the week before, and Hazel was still a bit under par with a slight fever. Nevertheless, we all had a wonderful time. We thought of you on Christmas Day, as I said in my letter, and drank your health. <clears throat> we had a turkey with the usual stuffing, and we had some cranberry sauce, which Hazel gingered up with port and grated orange peel. And this really is awfully nice, Jill. Um, <clears throat> she also brought the pudding and mince pies, which she made to start. She made them, even made the mince meat herself. I made the cake with the traditional icing and decorations, a Father Christmas on skis, some trees and holly, and three deers. We lit the brandy on the pudding, and it was lovely. At tea time, we had crackers and funny hats, and the reindeer and sleigh centerpiece. Well, the crackers were rather good that um, Terry bought. As you pull them, and the bang, with a bang, streamers shot up to the ceiling. It was really fun. Much nicer than the ordinary ones. Anyway, we had this sleigh centerpiece, the old one, with presents for everyone from the back of the sledge. <coughs> um, in the evening, we were all able to play a new game which Joe got called Game for Life, a bit like Monopoly, and this was great fun. As you can imagine, we had toys wall to wall in the front room, and they stayed like that for the whole week. <laughs> There were so many toys, I can't remember what all of them were. <laughs> I'll try and remember a few. Uh, one of Katie's, one of the nicest ones, uh, was a caravan, a plastic caravan about 12 inches long, complete with all the trappings, the sink, the crockery, the table and chairs, the beds, sun lounges, and all that, sun shades, whatever, for outside. <clears throat> and the other thing was a, sh a schoolhouse, a little wooden schoolhouse, for the little wooden animals called the Sylvan family, mostly rabbits and an owl in a mortarboard as the teacher. Katie had great fun setting them all out uh, with their little desks. <coughs> she also had two very nice soft toys. One was a lovely fat teddy bear, which was a pajama case, and a cuddly baby chimpanzee, brown one, who had long arms which were wrapped round Katie's neck. He was very cuddly. <coughs> she also had a nice skirt, a jade colour, with socks to match, which had a little yellow pom-pom at the back of each heel, and also a little jade coloured sleeveless pullover, which I had knitted. And Joe had several games, including an updated uh, version of the... Oh no, that was, that was Katie's including a game, uh, oh golly, I can't remember what it was called. <clears throat> anyway, Katie had this uh, updated magnetic, magnetic fish game. You remember that one, Jill? <clears throat> and uh, Joe had uh, a diary, a torch, lots of artist materials, sketch pads, pencil pens, heaven knows what, numerous books. Among them, Junior Encyclopedia, which was very nice. <clears throat> he had a, 
construction kit, a battery-operated computer game, and a, which was a Snoopy tennis match. He also had a pack of ten or so drawing pencils of different hardnesses from 4H to 8B, which I've never heard of. And Katie had a stylograph with which you make different designs on small circular pieces of paper, which we used as tumbler mats. Terry and Hazel gave me a lovely hairbrush with special bristles and a rubber backing <coughs> called Mason Pearson. I don't know if you've heard of it, Jill. It's a very old, established thing. It goes back to the 1800s. They also gave me a lovely framed photograph of a courtyard in a village in France, a village of Richelieu, uh, looking through a court, looking through an archway which is in the shade, through into the sunlit courtyard which is full with, filled with geraniums. Now Terry took this when they were in France and uh, enlarged it and framed it, and it really is lovely. Um, now what did she give Daddy? Um, a book on flower painting? No, that was for me. A book on flower painting. That's right. And they gave Daddy a book on watercolours and some paints and other bits and pieces I can't remember. Terry gave Hazel a large electric propagator for her seeds and cuttings. <coughs> I don't know how they managed to bring it in the caravan without the children wondering what on earth it was. It was a huge thing, about three feet square. Anyway, that was for her, Terry's, her cuttings. And Hazel gave Terry a smart shirt and his first pair of spectacles. Apparently he's slightly short-sighted and he's having to have spectacles. We gave Terry a casual blue and white check shirt, sort of half wool, which he liked. And Hazel, I gave, we gave her several pairs of gloves. She says she's always losing them. And pairs of fancy socks and panties and a bottle of perfume. I gave Daddy a shirt and a house plant, which was a rose pink cyclamen. And he gave me some pretty pearl earrings edged with a filigree of gold and two lovely mugs decorated with orange and red poppies, which I have, which I have put on the plate shelf above the dining room table on either side of an orange plate. He also gave me, in inverted commas, <laughs> some music which I had ordered and, and which I had not yet opened, a Chopin concerto and a list concert study. The Chopin concerto, I would not be able to manage it, but there's... There are one or two andante movements in it which I like very much, which I think I can cope with. Now, what else? <clears throat> I think that's about it, the list of presents. <laughs> so, we had a very enjoyable Christmas day. Fortunately, Hazel's appetite wasn't impaired, but towards the evening she would become very sleepy due to the, the temperature. We had another very enjoyable day on Boxing Day, which was Monday. I think we spent the afternoon watching the TV, one of the episodes of Anne of Green Gables, I expect you've heard that in America, which the children loved. This was quite restful for Hazel, and in the evening we had a sing-song round the piano. Terry sings very well, and Katie was able to, was able to read the words above the music and enjoyed singing Dreaming of a White Christmas a very old copy which we had years ago <coughs> um, in the 50s I suppose it would be and it was priced two shillings old money and published by a company called Irving Berlin Limited no doubt now defunct and Case, Katie also loved the song T for Two uh, <coughs> their original plan was to stay with us for Christmas Day and Boxing Day and then on the following day Tuesday to go on to Canterbury to Terry's people. But Hazel was still running a temperature on Tuesday morning, so they decided to stay another day to see how she was. Unfortunately, the following morning, Wednesday, she was no better. The temperature was still up. And Terry sol solved the dilemma by going to Carrington by himself, where he stayed Wednesday night and Thursday. Returning to Cushall in time for lunch, lamb chops, like you, Jill, on the, on the Friday... I think that was. No, Thursday. No, he came back on the Thursday for lunch. That's right. We were all very glad to see him back, and we spent the afternoon relaxing in front of the fire watching the last episode of Anne of Green Gables. It was a lovely film, but the emotional ending was too much for Katie, and she was in floods of tears. Anyway, it was very enjoyable. 
Eventually, they got off on Friday morning. They stayed that night, and they got off on Friday morning. They arrived home at three, and Hazel went straight to bed with a hot bottle. The next morning, Saturday, the doctor came and gave her penicillin tablets, and her temperature went down after a couple of days. <clears throat> we think the reason she's so long in recovering is because she, they had all started the flu two or three days before Hazel's school broke up. And she, Hazel, had to go in first because on the last day of school there was the sixth form prize giving ceremony with the prizes being given out by the Mayor of Norwich. And that was Jill's class, sixth form. And then because the staff had arranged a farewell luncheon for Hazel when the head, this headmaster made a speech and said some very nice things about Hazel and hoped she would be back when her children were a little older and also hoped that she would come in for the odd day if she was needed. The day after Hazel and Co had gone, we, we went to Margaret's for tea. She lives at Hacksbridge, so Clive came in his car to fetch us and then brought us home. They are both well, and we're very interested to hear all about you and Hazel. Her eldest boy, Paul, is engaged to be married. He's 27 now, would you believe? But Nigel is back at home after a disastrous love affair last year. Mrs. German is still alive and she's 87. Clive is retired but works the same job for two or three days in his own time, part time. Margaret still works full time and will do so, she thinks, for another four years when she will be 60. Can you believe that? <coughs> On New Year's Day, we went next door to the Brahms for drinks in the morning and spent a very pleasant couple of hours with them. But now all our decorations and tree are, are down and we're more or less more or less back to normal. But we will remember this Christmas for quite a while. Our weather is amazing. We have had practically no rain all of December and it's still very mild. There are two clumps of primroses flowering in the back garden and the crocuses are well up in the front garden. Pansy is still in flower. And indoors we have two bowls of daffodils with four or five blooms on each. I had a Christmas card from Dillis uh, and a letter. She, she was spending Christmas with her friend in Peru, of all places. I can't imagine what Christmas in Peru would be like. She had a friend, Patricia, who also taught when they were in Kuwait. And when Dillis went to Cairo, Patricia couldn't get a job there also, but landed a job in Brazil. So I presume Dillis flew out to Brazil to join her and then went on to Peru. <laughs>
was a couple of Chopin pieces, Jill. Um, the first one was a bit of a study, and the second one was part of the um, fantasy impromptu. Hello, Jill, Tom, Nicole and Benjamin. This is Grandpa speaking. Thanks for your Christmas cards and lovely calendar of American pictures. I was glad to see that you had had rain when I was watching the football at Candlestick Park. The field was just like the English soccer pitches, with divots and slippy pitches, patches. Last night I saw a recording of the match in Chicago, so I will be looking forward to the relay of the match in Miami. We had our first frost for over a month last night. No harm done, although everything is growing as if it was spring. I even had to spray the roses for greenfly this morning. I expect Nicole and Benjamin are back at school, so I hope they have a very successful term with their games as well as their studies. It is so gratifying to hear that they are both getting on so well. I changed over their photographs yesterday. It is nice that it is nice that they are just that little bit bigger this year and fit the frames exactly. They both look so grown up. We're always amused by Nicole's trademark on her letters, the little horse. Benjamin's bicycle sounds a good shape, pretty close to the ground, I expect, not like the ones we used to ride. We're both very well, and I hope you are. With love from Grandpa. Well, that seems to be all our news. Um, we're glad you are all well and that Nicole has just has got over her dose of flu. We send you all our very best wishes. Best wishes to Nicole for her piano lessons. You're doing splendidly, Nicole, and we should look forward to hearing about your progress. And Benjamin, good luck to you and your soccer and baseball teams. You're doing splendidly too. All our good wishes to you, Jill, in your teaching work and to Tom in his trumpet playing. Thanks again for your lovely tape. Happy New Year to you all, and love from Grandma. Cheers!